tonight, regrets she has a few. Just released transcripts from the January 6th Select Committee revealing Jenny Thomas, the wife of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, said she would take back the text she sent to White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows about trying to overturn the election, saying in part, quote, I regret the tone and context of these texts. Congressman Schiff then asking, quote, and what in particular disturbs you in hindsight about the content of the text? To which she replied, well, you know, I would take them all back if I could today. So I'm not comfortable with any of them being I wish I could have rewritten them. I wish I didn't send them. Paula Reed is out front. Jenny Thomas uh, says she regrets the tone and content of her text, but she still believes Trump go-to lie that the 2020 election was stolen? That's exactly right. Her remorse only goes so far. And when investigators on this committee really pressed her uh, about the content of those text messages, which was amplifying and pressing Meadows on these false claims of voter fraud, Thomas doubled down. She was pressed specifically by the committee vice chairwoman, Representative Liz Cheney, who asked her, and so you are aware that the president and his allies brought legal challenges, which was completely their right to do, but that they lost 61 out of 62 of those legal challenges. Thomas responds, I still believed there was fraud and irregularity, as millions of Americans do, Representative Cheney. Now, she also admits, Sarah, that she has no evidence of this. And this was as recently as just a few months ago. But she says there still could be evidence to be unearthed, insisting... I just think there's still a lot of things that are still being uncovered. And so I believe there was fraud and irregularity contrary to what you believe. Sarah, there's also a lot of questions that are raised by these exchanges that she had with the former White House chief of staff about the fact that the wife of a Supreme Court justice was pressing a top White House official to try to undermine democracy. It was surprising in the transcript that she was not asked many questions about her husband, but as a spouse, she does have some confidentiality protections. But she did disclose that when she referred in her exchange with Meadows to talking about all this with her best friend, that she was likely referring to her husband, though she insists her husband didn't know she was texting with Meadows until he read about it in the press. Seems like there's more questions to answer there. Thank you so much, Paula Reed. Out front now, John Dean, former Nixon White House counsel. Uh, John, thank you so much for being here. I always enjoy talking to you. Let's start with Jenny Thomas. Uh, she says she regrets, as you heard, sending Mark Meadows those texts. But on multiple occasions, she defends, um, she, she still defends her beliefs that she believes that the 2020 election was stolen, which it wasn't. Um, can she have it both ways here? Well, when I went through her transcript, I had the impression that she was very evasive. She wasn't remorseful uh, in general about the, uh, the the fact that she'd made these comments and sent these texts out. She was regretful that they'd gotten they'd been released and became uh, public, and she accused the committee of leaking them basically just to embarrass her, uh, which was not the case. But I I think she. Uh, she really was uncomfortable throughout her testimony. Her her attorney testified a lot for her, which I've never seen uh, a uh, chair let happen as often as it did in this uh, deposition. So it was it was an it's an odd collection in this deposition. Um, Paula just mentioned this that the Jenny Thomas also testified that the best friend she referenced in the text exchange with Mark Meadows was indeed. Her husband, Clarence Thomas, who, of course, is a Supreme Court justice, um, what did they discuss? Thomas says, quote, I wish I could remember, but I have no memory of the specifics. My husband often administers spousal support to the wife that's upset. So I assume that's what it was. No specific memory here. Seems to remember some things, not others. Um, you know, I, I have a question for you. If she is discussing any of this um, with the Supreme Court justice, you know, what are your big concerns? Well, she claimed at the outset of her testimony in a brief little statement, there was an ironclad rule in their house that they never talked about each other's business, that she was on a political lane or in a political lane, her husband was in the legal lane, and those lanes didn't cross. It was pretty hard to believe as the, as the uh, testimony unrolled. And what we know about their relationship, 
that that's possible. But, you know, anything's possible, I suppose. Uh, what, I, what I took away uh, from it was that they often talk about these things and uh, they're, each, uh, they're sounding boards for each other, which is kind of natural in a marriage. You know, I know you believe that Mark Meadows is target number two after, of course, then President Donald Trump. Donald Trump is right now the only Republican running for the presidency. Is any of this uh, new revelations from these transcripts enough to loosen Donald Trump's grip on the Republican Party, you think? I doubt it. Not his base. His base is going to stay where they are. They don't care about the facts. They often ignore them. Uh, they certainly don't read uh, 800 page reports about their president that are highly critical of what he did and examine it in some detail. So I, I think he's still got a very good shot at winning the nomination. Uh, the powers that be in the Republican Party are not going to be very happy with that. But again, they have a base that uh, is very pro Trump. So we'll have to see how this story is going to continue to unfold over the coming months. You were there uh, when Nixon went through all that he went through, and it certainly was not the same, was it? No, this is, uh, this is Watergate on steroids. Uh, it really is. And it, it, it is unrelenting. We're, we're getting information from multiple fire hoses that we have to dip into each day and try to get a grasp of what it is. Hopefully there'll be a gap here where we can take it all in.